Uh, well, welcome and good afternoon, uh, Ward 8. Uh, it is great to be here uh, on a chilly day, but on a great day, uh, to be able to break ground on an important uh, next phase of the St. Elizabeth's East project located uh, here in Congress Heights. And we're particularly uh, happy that today's uh, groundbreaking represents, I think, an important milestone uh, around affordable housing, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, again, these kinds of uh, projects cannot happen without an amazing team, uh, as well as many stakeholders which are represented today uh, to make sure that uh, projects like this happen. And so I want to give a few thank yous. I know that uh, we have uh, uh, Councilmember Treyon White from Ward 8, who's probably also going to give some uh, other thank yous to some folks and so forth. But a round of applause for Councilmember White. He's been an amazing partner uh, here on the San Luis East Campus and in Ward 8 in general. Uh, on the DEMPED team, uh, the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic, Economic Development's team, uh, big thank yous to uh, Ed Fisher and James Parks, uh, who lead our St. Elizabeth's East development. Great partners, uh, Kate Hardig, Jessica Carroll, uh, who help us uh, with many of the events like this, but also help us with the promotion and marketing uh, of the St. Elizabeth's East campus. Uh, a big thank you to Susan Longstreet, uh, our lawyer uh, on this project, uh, as well as to Shonda Washington uh, in the Deputy Mayor's Office. Uh, also, cannot forget a big thank you to Sarosh Opadwala, our Director of Real Estate Development. Sarosh is the one that doesn't have a jacket on today, but he'll, he'll figure all of that out. Uh, on the, we also have incredible uh, financing partners uh, on this uh, important affordable housing project. Um, D.C. Housing Finance Agency, Todd Lee uh, and his entire team. Uh, we have uh, Director Polly Donaldson from the Department of Housing and Community Development, uh, who provided an important piece of financing for this project, uh, and as well as, obviously, uh, the leader uh, for me and for our entire efforts here in St. Elizabeth East, which is Mayor uh, Muriel Bowser. So thank you, Mayor, uh, very much for your leadership on this as well. As I normally say, you know, in order for me to keep my job, I got to do three things. That's what the mayor says, right? And I like my job, so I got to do these three things. I've got to be focused on uh, making sure that we get uh, jobs for DC residents. I've got to be focused on making sure that we continue to focus on increasing tax revenues in the District of Columbia, which pay for schools and police and many of the other services that we have. And I've got to be focused on affordable housing. Uh, in the District of Columbia. And it's a project, uh, it's really a, a, a development area like the St. Elizabeth East Campus, uh, but really projects like this one behind me uh, that hit so many uh, of those important priorities. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the affordable housing uh, specifics for this, but for me, the important parts about this is that 80% of the total units uh, for this project uh, are affordable at a maximum of 50% of area median income. What that means is that they are affordable to a family of four making about $60,000 a year. That's 80% of the total units. We also have an important metric on this project, uh, which we don't have, uh, don't see as much on some of our other projects. 88 of the total units are going to be three-bedroom units. So we have some larger family size units here as well for this project. You know, this, um, this development uh, really represents a progression uh, of, of projects here on the St. Elizabeth East Campus. Uh, when the mayor came into office, she tasked us with a few things. She said that we need to get long-stalled projects moving forward, and she wanted them done quickly, but she wanted them done right. Uh, and this project, I think, that we're able to start, we've completed lots of infrastructure. If people haven't been out uh, to the St. Elizabeth East Campus recently, you're standing on new streets. You're looking at new sidewalks, new gutters, and obviously behind us is the new entertainment and sports arena, which we opened up a little bit uh, earlier this year. Uh, these kinds of projects, uh, they take a little bit of time, but we're happy that over the last four years, we've literally been able to say that we've started things and we're getting to completion. We're getting to openings uh, of many of these projects. Another important uh, concept here on the St. Elizabeth East Campus is that it's providing opportunity. Uh, if you go to the Entertainment and Sports Arena, you may uh, go to the uh, concession or the vending operations and you'll see MLK Deli there, uh, a great Ward 8 business that's employing lots of people. Or if you're walking into the arena from one of our parking lots, you may get a ride uh, from the Anacostia uh, bid, uh, another uh, opportunity for people in this local Congress Heights community to get 
uh, great employment opportunities, but more importantly, a great opportunity for us to continue to integrate the Congress Heights community into what's happening here. For years, as people probably remember, this campus has been segregated. It literally has been fenced off. Uh, we are now in the process of opening back up to the community, but more importantly, providing some of those important amenities uh, that we know that the community wants. And this great example behind me uh, of 252 units of housing, 80% of which are going to be affordable, we think is a great and important uh, first step. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to welcome up uh, one of the important community leaders uh, for uh, our project here. Uh, many people uh, have known her for many years. I have known her personally for many years. Uh, and she has been a great uh, champion for all of the efforts uh, in this immediate uh, ANC district, as well as for the St. Elizabeth East Campus. Uh, Mary Cuthbert, if I could invite you up to the mic. Good afternoon. I'm Mary Cuthbert. I've been working on this St. Elizabeth East Campus since the year 2000, 18 years. Uh, we, 8C, has been working on the development of the East Campus, and it is coming along, Mayor. We appreciate every development that's here, and I'm most excited about our entertainment arena so I can go out in the evening and I can walk down the street for entertainment. Uh, the mayor has promised Ward 8 that we would benefit from every piece of development that's coming in this city. Now, here in Ward 8, we are benefiting from the east campus of St. Elizabeth's. It's our own. We have to keep it, respect it, and make sure everybody come enjoy it. Now, many of you know I'm a little competitive. Now, <laughs> we have the National Harbor on that side where we go to Maryland and spend our money. You don't have to go there anymore. You can come right here in the District of Columbia and Congress Heights. You can take the bus, you can walk, you can drive. So we can spend our money right here in Ward 8. Am I correct, Mayor? We can spend our money right here. So the development is moving quickly. I've been a commissioner for over 30 years, and this is the first time I can remember where we zoned something, and in four years you see the building up there. Let's give the mayor a round of applause for that. We need that. And I thank all of you for coming out. Now we have our new housing. I don't want to hear no complaints about housing. It's right here. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce to you our mayor, who's been in the city, and she's got a new term, and this is the first time in the history. But you know what? It takes a woman to do the job. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Let's hear her for the incomparable Mary Cuthbert. Give her a big round of applause. And I know it's a little breezy out here, so I'm going to be quick. But I want to acknowledge my entire team. Uh, I, I arrived when Deputy Mayor Kenner was speaking, acknowledging our St. Elizabeth's team, our development team, uh, and everyone who has been a part of uh, the vision, uh, as uh, Commissioner Cuthbert said, to start something on the very first days of our administration and be able to deliver an arena and get started on a very substantial housing development uh, is very critical to the work that they do. So let's hear for Deputy Mayor Kenner and the Big Deal team at Dimpeg. Give them a big round of applause. A big round of applause. I also want to acknowledge uh, you, Commissioner, your fellow commissioners in the Ward 8 community uh, who have been front and center for this project. Um, lots of votes, lots of proposals, lots of feedback, uh, negotiating back and forth to make sure that any development that happens in Ward 8 enhances Ward 8 and doesn't take Ward 8 over. And I think that's what we're achieving uh, with the projects that we were delivered. So let's hear for the Ward 8 community. 
Let's really hear it for the Ward 8 community. Uh, and uh, I, too, want to just say a bit about what uh, we're, we're building here with housing. Uh, Brian and his team always said uh, that what we have proposed is bigger than basketball. Uh, and I think you know that this site will de be developed in, in parcels. We've delivered on one. Uh, the housing opportunities are next. The hospital is, is yet to come. But all of these things will enliven uh, this this part of our city. We should also always acknowledge our congresswoman who has been front and center in making sure that federal lands come where they belong to us under local control uh, so that we can make uh, happen uh, what's happening here at St. Elizabeth's. Uh, I have been able to come to the arena a couple of times for a show, for wrestling, uh, and to see uh, people discover Congress Heights has been enlightening. Uh, to see people use our metro station uh, has been wonderful. But to see uh, the pride, uh, one thing that uh, Pete, the feedback that I've gotten is that everybody is so nice. Uh, the people that work here, the people that are helping uh, people navigate around to find parking and get to the metro, uh, people tell me they're so nice uh, and they're so proud. Uh, and I am just really grateful to be a part of this project. And I want to, again, uh, thank my entire team for the work that's gotten done. Now, as happy as we are about the arena and having 200 units uh, and having large family size units and having uh, so many units that are um, below market rate uh, is part of our commitment to building affordable housing. Uh, and it is true Commissioner, that, that I promised that we would uh, not only run in all eight wards, but govern in all eight wards. And our strategies are to make sure that Ward 8 and all of our communities have the amenities that they want. Uh, one thing I know for sure is that Washingtonians, no matter where they live, they want the same things. They want safe housing. They want to be able to get access to goods and services. They want great schools for their kids. They want to be safe and they want to be respected. Uh, and I think this project represents all of those things. So it brings me great pleasure now to introduce your council member, Trayon White. Good afternoon. How about this hot weather? I'm excited to lead this community as the council member. I want to thank our Mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser, Deputy Mayor Kenner for their leadership. Give them another round of applause and their staff. Oftentimes, I come to projects and do ribbon cuttings and speeches, and I'm kind of leery on what should I say and shouldn't say because I don't know if I totally believe in the project or not. Um, but I do say this is one of the projects I'm extremely proud of, not just because it's housing, but it's affordable housing that people in the community can come and live in. And so we talked about the 252 units that's going to be behind me, but there are 208 uh, units that are under 6% AMI. I give a round of applause for that type of leadership that we can ensure that people from this community – and all other people from all over D.C. are able to live here. But we, we this weekend, I had the opportunity to go uh, to the Sports and Learning Complex with about 40 young men joined by Jimmy Jenkins. And they were excited. They had somewhere right here in our community we can go to, have fun, enjoy entertainment. And so that comes with big vision. And that's one of the things my predecessor, uh, Murray and Burry, talked about, having big vision and showing that we have the same opportunities, amenities, and access as everyone else in the District of Columbia. And I think we're going down the right road. Do you agree? Yeah. I also want to thank our commissioners who've been on the front line prior to me becoming a council member, the community members who have fought for this project, spent time and energy without being paid to ensure that residents can benefit from this big vision. Not only are we providing housing, and this is a historical property, so there's going to be some special, special construction going on here uh, with Flirty and Collins and also AADC uh, to get this thing done. And I'm happy. when De 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 Deputy Mayor Brian Kennedy said, I'm going up early. I said, I hope so, because my lips are getting numb. <laughs> and I don't want to be up here looking crazy. But in Ward 8, we have uh, expressed over and over again how we felt like we were behind in development, behind in opportunities. And I can say there's a new day on the horizon. There's a new day on the horizon. Not only are we doing these apartments, but there are also spaces for community-based nonprofits. You all like that? 
and it's, it's imperative that we put money and resources and time and energy to ensuring that those who touch people every day are part of the conversation. So I'm extremely proud to be a council, con, con, excuse me, council member of this ward. That's that cold kicking on my lips again. <laughs> And to be a part of this ribbon cutting, there were so many people who have been involved and given their energy, time, and effort. And we want to see this, this and many other projects like this come to the ward. So I want to thank you again, Murray Murray Bowser, for your leadership. And I look forward to coming and doing wonderful things in this arena as well. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Council Member. Uh, I'm going to invite just a few other people up to the stage. I want to give one more thank you. Uh, I, I think I saw Catherine Buell, the former uh, St. Louis East director here. Uh, thank you, Catherine, for all of your efforts uh, to make sure that this important project happens. This time I'd like to invite up uh, some of the other uh, nonprofit and private partners that ensure that this project is going to be a success. Stan Jackson, president of the Anacostia Economic Development Corporation, David Flaherty, CEO and principal, as well as Dwayne Miller, uh, vice president for Flaherty and Collins, and Bruce Lowry, senior vice president uh, at Western Alliance Bank. I'll let you guys do that. Thank you. Thank Man, you. Good to see you. Good. Good. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for being out here this afternoon. And I have to say once again, uh, Mayor, promises made, promises kept. We thank you very much for that. And to your team, uh, you have been extremely supportive in getting this project done, and we can't thank you enough. But more importantly, to our community, we want to say to our community, this is your project. This is your development. This is your home, and we want you to be part of this. We are so excited about this opportunity this afternoon, and we are so elated that you will get a chance to actually enjoy the benefits of this amazing development. Uh, it's chilly out here right now, so I'm not going to stay long, and I'm going to pass it to my colleagues, but it has been truly a labor of love to get us to this point, and I know that we're going to bring home a wonderful project to our community and to our city. Um, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Flaherty. I'm CEO of Flaherty and Collins Properties. And on behalf of uh, the over 500 employees at Flaherty and Collins Properties, uh, we are very, we are so proud and honored to be part of this wonderful team. Uh, bringing the residents of St. Elizabeth's East to fruition. Uh, we'd like to thank May Mayor Bowser and Deputy Mayor Kiernan for, for being here today and supporting that the, they've provided for us to allow us to get to this point. Thank you so much. Uh, these projects take so much partnership and teamwork, and we would not be here without the tremendous support of DEMPAD. We appreciate all the hard work and coordination from R4 Capital, uh, who provided the equity and construction bridge financing as well as the permanent debt for the project. In addition, we'd also like to thank uh, DC Lisk office who provided our essential pre-development loan uh, for the project. And my understanding is this may be the largest loan they've uh, provided in their in 39 years. So thank you so much for that. Uh, it takes money to make these things happen. And I'd like to thank my partner, Dwayne Miller, who's our strategic developer who's been uh, the boots on the ground here in D.C. and formed so many great partnerships that have got us to this day. Uh, we're additionally, we are grateful to AEDC, Stan Jackson, who you just heard from, and, and Bill Haig, our development partners on the project. Uh, Flaherty and Collins Properties has completed over 30 public-private partnerships in mixed-use market rate and affordable housing and has spurred growth and development in downtowns throughout the country. But the project, this project is truly unique and special. Uh, this, this ceremony represents a $100 million plus investment in Ward 8 and lays another building block into the great community building efforts in this area, from the sports arena uh, to, uh, to across the street to the red brick development that will be just down the road. It's great to see all this development in one area which will serve to invigorate and energize the St. Elizabeth East area in an urban core that is thriving, bustling area. We truly believe that success breeds success. All this serves to bolster the, the live, work, play vision of a walkable, bikeable, sustainable, 
connected urban core. We look forward to working with everyone on this project and, and well, as well as expand our footprint in the Mid-Atlantic area. And we'll continue to grow our relationships that we've helped to cultivate over the, the last four years. Thank you all for attending and we're excited to get uh, going on the residents of St. Elizabeth East. Yeah, thank you. I'm uh, Dwayne Miller, and I'm going to keep it real brief. One of the construction guys looked at me and said, if you would have uh, got a little faster, we would have been building in September. So <laughs> sorry about that. You know, I've been working on this since 2014, and uh, we actually uh, lost the master development role to Red Brick. And then Red Brick said, hey, do you guys want to do this CT campus? And I said, yeah. So, um, so we're here. I want to shout out to the Cunningham and the Siegel team. I mean, just to be able to, you know, dive into these buildings, you know, uh, to, to really do the value engineering to get it in line. So we just appreciate uh, all, all that's been done. So that's all I got to say. So I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. This is cold. <laughs> so I'm going to keep it really, really brief. Um, my name is Bruce Lowry from Western Alliance Bank. And I can't tell you how pleased we are to be a part of this project. We believe this is going to be an absolutely transformative project for this area. Western Alliance Bank is a strong supporter of affordable housing. The bank is in fact located in only 20 different states, but we have affordable pro housing projects in 42 states and now the District of Columbia. So we're looking for, forward to doing more and that's all I have to say. Thanks. <laughs> we're going to break the ground and then we're going to get out of here. Let's do it.